Henshin go go baby what's good guys Yoku here and today's video is strictly geared towards my new players those who are going to be popping into the game with the newly revealed PlayStation 5 exclusive Honkai Star release as well as just starting the game coming into 1.4 we have a great banner this is one of the best times to get into the game right now Jing Liu an amazing DPS character and she's hot Topaz an amazing sub DPS and main DPS character and she's hot and she's showing thighs and then we have Zila who do I need to say it Come on, guys, you already know what it is. She's hot. And she also happens to be one of the strongest, if not, I guess she's not the strongest DPS character in the game anymore, but that's not the point. Regardless, I've compiled a bunch of little spark notes to be able to tell you guys or help you guys decide on who you want to choose out of your pools or start in the game, whatever the case may be. And we'll go down the list. First, I want to start off with Zila or Sele, however you want to pronounce her name, depending on where you came from. She has one of, if not the highest base attack stat in the game. This character has been running amok since the start of the game, basically 1.0 all the way up to now, even with Imbibitor Lune being one of the strongest, if not, I guess it's fair to say he is the strongest DPS character right now, but Zila is literally right there. Zila is a crazy good character. Her ability known as Resurgence is something that a lot of people think is broken. But as I say all the time, anything that breaks the physical mechanics of the game is automatically top tier. Her Resurgence ability, for those that don't know about it, is basically going to allow her to score another turn. Anytime she nets a kill without being in Resurgence, let me say that, as long as she is not inside of Resurgence itself, she gets to go again. She has to get a kill first, but because she has one of the highest base attack stats in the game, her multipliers on her skill, her ultimate, even the talent itself, crazy good. She's even got better abilities stacked into her traces. She is one of the most self-sufficient DPS characters to exist in the game currently, and she works with almost any single support character in the game. You could even double buff her if you wanted to. You could use double Nihility. Her plus Silver Wolf is gonna be amazing. Her plus Branya. If you don't have Branya because Branya is another five star, you have Ting Yun. Even Yu Kong, without E6, mind you, could work with Zila. Zila is just that strong of a character to where if she needs some damage, she needs an extra little bit of damage or boost, she can make it happen. Most of her performance will straight up come from Zila as a character. Even better is going to be the fact that you could run her with the Musketeer set. You could run her with the Quantum set. You could run her with the Wind set if you wanted to. Zila can work off of almost any offensive set in the game. Relic set is what I'm talking about. Whether or not it's her most optimal doesn't matter. Nine times out of ten, you're still going to score that kill. One of the biggest negatives to Zila right now, though, will be future enemies. Right now, we have enemies known as the Mara Struck. I won't spoil that for the sake of what you guys will experience throughout the story, but the Mara Struck basically counter Zila's ability to trigger Resurgence. They are able to revive themselves, and there are means to get rid of that. Zila does not have those means in her Kit. She needs another partner on the team, maybe two, in order to take it away so that she can work with Resurgence. So it's just a little bit of team building. Right now, for those that are starting the game brand new, you probably won't have access to this team building. One of the characters that you need is a limited five star. The other character that you need is a four star named Pela, and you would have to pull her. Thankfully, Pela should be coming on some of these uh, banners pretty soon here, and you might get lucky and pull her off banner. Regardless, you might get lucky and pull her off banner. But those are really the negatives that I see about Zila. She does have the potential to get power crept in the future. Not, I don't see that happening anytime soon. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I do see them changing the way enemies function, i.e. countering resurgence, and that might be the way to essentially nerf the character. They can't nerf the character, but they could definitely make the game more difficult for Zila to score her single target KOs. And that's what would push Zila down in terms of being a top tier DPS character. Next on my list, I want to go over Jing Lu, baby girl. Actually, wait, we can't call her baby girl anymore. Big sister, all right? <laughs> Big sister Jing Liu. Easily, easily one of my favorite characters they've shown off so far. I am in love with what I've seen about this character, dude. She is gorgeous. She's amazing. Her animations are beautiful. The whole crescent moon thing, the ice slash. Oh, I love ice as an element. I'm all over Jing Liu. But enough glazing, let me tell you more about her. She will possibly be the most destructive character in the game. I know I just talked about Zila being a very strong character, and that's true. I did mention Imbibitor Lune. Imbibitor Lune, which I won't spoil for my new players, because story. He is a character that you will eventually come across if you have not spoiled yourself already, but he is the strongest character currently in the game. He spits out damage. He does not have a drawback, a real drawback, I should say. His drawback would be skill points. He doesn't care. He's going to do whatever he wants anyway, and he's going to pop 200 to 400,000 damages per skill shot. It's ridiculous. At this current moment in time, Jing Liu is looking to be on similar levels to this character. She is super OD. She's gonna have tons of big dick damage, similar to Zila. 
she will also have very easy to build relic options. In her case, however, she won't need a lot of crit rate. When you're building your relics, there will be some things that you want to pay attention to, such as your sub stats, your main stats, things like that. Those coming from Genshin Impact will be very familiar with what I'm talking about, so I won't have to explain it too much. But if you're brand new to the Hoyoverse games as a whole, what you can see right now on screen is essentially what you're going to be looking at. You have a head, you have the arms, you have the body, you have the feet, you have the planar ornament, the sphere, and then you're going to have your rope. These are going to be the main things you're looking for. Each one of these has a main stat, minus your head and hands. These will always be attack or HP, so you're always looking for substats here. What I mean by easy to build relic options is that in Jing Liu's case, she could rock out with the launch of his disciple if she really wanted to. She could rock out with the musketeer piece if she really wanted to. If you want a lot, a lot of speed, you could do two piece messenger. You could do quantum set. You could do her actual ice set. There's a lot of different things that you could do with Jing Liu. And in, in particular, most DPS characters are looking for a crit rate body piece. Why? Because crit rate is very hard to come by. Stacking up crit damage is a lot easier through the substats because you get more of it compared to crit rate. However, Jing Liu, from what we can tell, has crit rate built into her kit. She's very similar to a character called Yang Xing. Yang Xing is a standard banner five star ice hunt character. What Yang Xing's ability or his passive allows him to do is that whenever he activates his soul sink or soul swords, they changed the name. I don't remember what it's called, but like soul sword something. When he activates that, he basically gains the 80% or 100% crit rate that he would need to hit whatever it is in the game. That allows him to focus on building crit damage as much as possible and only needing a certain amount of crit rate. Jing Liu is very similar to that. When she goes into her transcendent state, she's going to gain 50% crit rate. You're looking to have another 50%, sometimes even 30%, depending on what else you're running. There's tons of different relic options you could run to be able to gain the rest of it. That'll get you as close to, if not over, 100% crit rate which means you can focus on crit damage. Then you get something like this with a crit damage body piece. You can focus on good substats and now you're rocking out with your socks out. That'll get you somewhere around a character like this, which is my Himiko that has 39% crit rate and then 174% crit damage. But as I told you, that 39 would essentially turn into 89% and then whatever else you have on top of that, maybe Fu Schwins on your team, which will boost it by another 10% and you're almost at 100%. Jing Liu is looking to be a selfish, character, which means that she cares mostly about what she's doing on the team, how she's going to get her damage and who's going to help her get that damage. But she's also SP neutral. Being SP neutral means that you can actually double DPS her. What do I mean by that? I essentially mean that you could stack two DPS characters on one team and then you could have similar or greater output in damage compared to just triple buffering this one character. An example of this would look something like Jing Liu, Blade, Ting Yun or Branya, and then your sustain in this case being Fu Xuan, Locha, Lynx, whatever you want. She works great with any HP consuming character or playstyle because of the way that her own kit works, being that it sucks away HP from the entire party so that she could boost her own damage by X amount. I always say this, anything that has anything to do with HP consumption and then you boost your damage from however much you take out of the HP, nasty. It will always be nasty. They have to mess up these multipliers so bad to make a character like that dog shit. why did i garbage again those coming from genshin impact perfect example hu tao she is still one of the strongest dps characters in that game that you could pull there's a reason for that jing liu also has great support options she works very similar to what i mentioned about zila almost every single character will work in her favor the downside to any of this is that if you don't have a bulky enough team they will die she will kill them just as fast as she kills the enemy so you better hope that you kill the enemy first last but not least we will go over topaz topaz is I, I, that's still big sister and baby girl i don't know how else to say it but i love me some topaz dude she is easily i just said that right i just said that about jing liu topaz is one of my favorite characters like just off design alone i love this character bro she's so good in her defense i will say this 100 percent turning the tables of what we will look at in terms of dps characters now in the future what do i mean by that up to this point from 1.0 to the uh, end of 1.3 we have been looking at a lot of teams as hyper carry i'm not the biggest fan of it but the majority of the community has been pushing this hyper carry agenda what that means is they've been taking one dps character and then giving them two supports or three supports the rest of the team funnels all of their energy into helping boost up the damage of this one character in topaz's case topaz is finally going to allow a lot of players and a lot of characters 
to break that meta. We are no longer going to have to sit there and listen or look at one DPS character, Cough Cough Jing Yuen, being boosted to a significant amount just for uh, the supports to just do that support, I suppose. But you can actually see some more variety in your teams. Something that'll be really cool to see would be Himiko and Topaz, a double fire comp and maybe like double fire, double quantum or double fire, double win when the, the Ho Ho character comes out uh, in, in 1.5 and you can use her with Branya. Whatever works, whatever floats your boat, point being is that she's going to turn the tables on DPS characters in the future. Her kit looks to be a strong, strong mixture of being a main DPS and a sub DPS or both. You, you could rock her however you want to. That's really the beauty of what Topaz is doing. As I mentioned, coming into the game and bringing us a new style of gameplay to, to enjoy the play, a variety of teamwork, things like that. Her big thing is significantly boosting the damage of any follow-up centric character. Your follow-up centric characters are going to be characters like Clara, Himiko, Jing Yuen, possibly Blade, and whoever else works in that boat. Two of those characters that I mentioned, you actually have the potential to pull. If you start the game prior to Jing Liu or even during Jing Liu, following a couple of my guides or any other creator's guides, you will be able to get your first five star in, in possibly just a couple hours. I know when I play the game, I get my first five star in about one to three hours, depending on how lax I am about playing the game. If you pull Clara, if you pull Himiko, you immediately, in my opinion, this is my advice, you immediately wanna start conditioning your account to go ahead and pull for Topaz. Why do I say that? Because Topaz can function as a whole DPS on her own, possibly, I don't know this yet, we have to get it. It's possible that she functions as a whole DPS character on her own, which means if you had Clara, Clara can run one side of MOC and then Topaz can run another. Or if you get super lucky, because from the start of the game to where we are now, you can get a guaranteed limited five-star character, you can get enough jades to get a uh, five-star light cone if you wanted to, and you can run enough to where you would still be able to get three limited uh, or three standard five-star pulls, that's what I should say, from the standard banner. Whether or not they're characters or light cones, I have no control over that. I'm just letting you guys know it is very generous at the beginning of the game. Up to this point now, we're like, what, three, four patches deep? You have a lot of Jays to collect from the start of the game to now. You don't have to run around with a bare bones account. It really just comes down to luck and what you do with those Jays. Topaz plus any of these follow-up characters are looking really good to have. Lastly, she has Gwenyphon on her banner. Gwenyphon is looking to be a very strong character, similar to what I mentioned before with the supports, but in this case, she's an Ahilid character. Ahilides are your debuffs. Those are gonna be your Payless, your Silver Wolves, your Sampos, your Lucas, characters that take defense or reductions away from the enemy or they apply something to the enemy so that your team can then do more damage. In Gwenyphon's case, she has a signature ability called Fire Kiss. Fire Kiss is going to add damage reduction or rather it increases the damage received by your team to the enemy. It's a really great thing for her to have. Can help put fire on the map. It might work really good with Himiko. I don't know. But regardless, she's going to be able to slot into multiple teams. The downside to all of this pertaining to Topaz is that she could potentially be another Jinguin scenario. Those of you that are new have no idea what I'm talking about. Jing Yuen is a god of a character, a lightning lord, if you will. And unfortunately, he does not perform like a lord without a significantly large investment into the character. He needs a high amount of investment into the character. If this is another Jing Yuen scenario, as a new player, I cannot advise someone picking up Jing Yuen, for instance, and having to grind to get all of that. You just will not see the reward from the amount of investment that you're allowed to put in because the game will time gate you or rather it'll get you on what resources you can get. If Topaz is another Jing Yuen scenario, GG's, maybe. I mean, I'm gonna pick her up regardless because I love Topaz and I will also be making a brand new PlayStation account. Probably gonna go for Jing Liu and then try to get Topaz as well, but it is what it is. All of that said, I'm done. Hopefully this helped answer your question, guys, on, on like what a new player should be able to do. If I were to make a solidified what you should do as a new player and I could give you the uh, solicited advice, if you will, that you're asking me for, like let's say you just asked me the question, like who should I pull? No bias. I would probably pick Jing Liu out of all three of them. The reason for this is because Zila, as much as I love Zila, right now pulling Zila, I, I don't know where what the future holds for her. As I mentioned before with some of the Mars struck enemies, there is no telling what they could do for messing up her resurgence ability, making it harder to trigger resurgence. And if it's hard for her to trigger resurgence, it's hard for her to do her job. It's hard for her to get early KOs. It's hard for her to zero to one cycle in MOC. And that's really what you want is Zila to do big damage 
kill something and then do more big dig damage on top of that because of resurgence. Topaz is in a weird position for me. I need to play this character. Her kit looks great on paper, but again, so did Jing Yuan's kit. I need to play Topaz for myself to get a very firm understanding of where I wanna place this character. If I started the game and I pulled Clara Himiko, like I said, I'm probably 100% gonna say grab Topaz because she will significantly help either side of MOC or either team that you wanna build, and then you can go from there. Jing Liu, maybe another Imbibit or Lune situation. She doesn't really have a downside. If they made another enemy and the enemy was Mara Struck, for instance, they die. She doesn't need resurgence to trigger her thing. She just needs to get into transcendent state. Getting into transcendent state is not difficult for her to do at all. She just does two skills and you're done. If you're fast, she does two skills back to back and then you're done. So the character as a, as a complete package, everything you could ever ask for. Big dick damage, uh, low relic requirements. So super low investment, easy to build, which means low investment equals big dick damage. High investment equals like you're you're just BBCing out here, bro. You're you're walking around with an orc thing. I don't know. She she's a great character off rip. You don't have to do a lot to make Jing Liu strong, and that's why Zila remained at the top for as long as she did. In the future, I don't know. Last piece of advice that I will give is make sure you pay attention to building your team. There are two types of free to play players. I don't mean this in a disrespectful manner, but I'm going to use the term. There are smart free to play players and then dumb ones. I again, I'm not calling anyone dumb, but I'm saying this in a way that when you're free to play, your resources are limited. You're not spending J's on refreshes. You are not pulling on everything that you possibly can. Well, I mean, some of you are. And, and then that's where I get like the dumb free to play thing from, because if you plan your account, you know what you're looking for and you know who like, OK, I'm building Jing Liu. So I need everything possible to make sure Jing Li was built. I need two supports, I need a stain, I need a blade, whatever you wanna do, plan out what you're doing, done. You can, oh my gosh, bro. If you, if you plan this game out right, you get so much rewarded from it. On a free to play account, you can get every signature light cone, you can get your main DPS character, you can get the sustains, uh, you can get the supports that you want, you can get multiple a of support, there's so much you can do if you plan this account or you plan the game out the way that it should be played. But if you pull for everything under the sun, you are going to brick your account so fast. Oh man, Fushwin's the best sustain. I want her. Oh man, Locha just came out. I want to pull for him too. You burned your 50-50. You have no jades. You can't pull anything. And now you got to keep saving. But then you get the players who are just going to, they keep pulling. They keep pulling every single chance they get, bro. Oh, I got 10 jades. Pull. Why are you doing that? Stop. I'm not here to bash any players. I'm just letting you guys know, plan the account. That's my last piece of advice. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, do leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. If you want to see more content like this all week, I'm, I'm making videos for you new players. Uh, I'm treating it as if I was a new player, what I would want to see. If there are things or questions that you want answered, leave it down in the comments down below or in a community post. Just, just at me, at me on Twitter, join my discord, talk to me on Twitter, whatever it's going to be. However you want to get it to me, I will answer it. Whether that be in short form content or long form content, we gonna make it happen. I can't say my user outro is inappropriate for YouTube. Smell you later.